Hey guys, welcome to lesson four of week six. We're gonna get right on into it and it's gonna look really similar to what I think lesson two started with. So we have a word problem. Ron had 12 cards. He gave the same number of cards to each of his friends. How many cards did he give each friend? Why is this a division problem? What in this sentence is, or a question is making this a division problem? It's because it's about taking a total and separating it equally um, to groups. So in this problem, we have a total of 12. We're separating them into how many friends? Do the same number to each of his friends. I think we're missing something. Each of his three friends. We're separating into three or our three friends. What we're missing is how many cards each of those three friends gets. So that's why it's a division problem. We're taking a total and we're dividing it out. We're separating it out into equal groups. So it's getting smaller. It's gonna get smaller because it's gonna get put into three separate groups. The facts that we know. So we're gonna come down and this is the same thing that we had before. What do we know? Well, we know 12 is our total. So we know 12 is our total. We know three is our number of groups. What we don't know is the number in a group. And this will change. So this is back from that previous problem. This first part is the number of no longer packs, but friends. And we're not taking that uh, uh, with the number of erasers, but the number of cards each friend gets. Total number of cards now. So we know that three is one of our factors. It's the number of groups. We do not know the number in a group, but we do know the total, which is not 10 anymore, but 12. So three times what number equals 12? We know that to be four. So the answer will be four cards. Each friend gets four cards. Notice I put my label with my um, answer because it was a word problem. If I would just say four, that's not enough information. I need to have a label if it's a word problem. All right, let's do some just the facts problems. Switch it back. I want, to, I want you to show your answer with your fingers. So the first one is, what is 32 divided by four? I'll give a little extra time for this because it's division. 32 divided by four. Switch it, think of it as multiplication. So four times what number gets you 32? And the answer is eight. 32 divided by 4 is 8, or 4 times 8 equals 32. Next problem. What number is 20 divided by 5? So what number is 20 divided by 5, or 20 divided by 5 equals what? Or thinking of it as multiplication, 5 times what number equals 20? Show me with your fingers. 4. 
five times four equals 20, or 20 divided by five equals four. And last one, what is 18 divided by two? What is 18 divided by two? Or again, inverse, two times what number equals 18? Show me with your fingers, two times nine. Two times nine equals 18, or 18 divided by two equals nine. Open up your book to page 72. We are, of course, on lesson four. Key idea says, Multiplication and division are inverse operations. You can use factor times factor equals product to model both multiplication and division word problems. Here's our problem. Maya has 28 flowers and four bases. She wants to put the same number of flowers in each base. How many flowers should she put in each base? So we know our total is our total number of flowers is 28. We're going to divide that or separate it into four bases. So, I mean, you can picture four of these, four bases, four of them. We have 20 total flowers, and so we're going to start putting the equal amount in the four bases. How many flowers do we end up with? So we can look at that as factor times factor equals product, or number of rows times number in each row equals total, or number of groups times number in each group equals total. In this problem, the number of groups is our number of bases, which we know is four. You go back into the word problem to find that is four times the number of flowers in each base. That's the thing that we don't know equals the total number of flowers. That was our first piece of information they gave us, 28. So they rewrite that as four times unknown number equals 28. Think an array of 28 circles and four rows has how many circles in each row? How many circles in each row? Well, they're asking us, what is this blank? Four times what gets you 28? You can make that an array, four, and go, 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 until you get 28. The answer would be how many, um, row, well, I'm saying how many rows. They're saying how many circles in a row. They're saying if it was like this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and have four of them, how many are in row? Seven with a blank equals seven, four times seven equals 28. Unknown number is seven. And then this is a word problem. So we would say seven flowers or Maya should put seven flowers in each base. For the try this, draw a line to match the word problem with the equation that models it. One, Susan wants to arrange 24 chairs. Well, that's our total. And six equal rows. How many chairs should she put in each row? This is a division problem, but we're going to write it as a multiplication problem with an unknown. I know that 24 is our total. Oh, I can't, I gotta go further than that because look, that's our total or our product in all three of these. So I don't know yet. I know that we have six equal rows. So that's how many rows? That would be our first number. And there you are. Our first number right there, six. It's also the only one that has six in it. So right there, six times unknown number equals 24. Two, Devin has 24 bananas. There's our total. Again, that's our total for all three, so we need to go further than that. He wants to put four bananas in each bag. How many bags does he need? So the bags would be the, uh, the number of groups, unknown, unknown. So it's one of these two. There's four bananas in a bag, so there's four in each group. That one has three, that one has four, and there it is. And the last one, Julie has $24 to buy notebooks. Each notebook costs $3. How many notebooks can Julia buy? $24 is our total. Each individual notebook costs $3, so that's gonna be our second, second uh, factor. And that matches with this multiplication sentence or equation. Blank times three equals 24. Turn the page. We have for four, five, six, and seven word problems. 
You are going to read those. You are going to turn them into a multiplication sentence, find the missing number, and put that missing number into the answer. For instance, number four says, Carlos put 48 toy cars in six boxes. So I know this is a division problem. I know it's a division problem that's saying 48 divided by six equals what? But I'm gonna turn that into a multiplication sentence. I know that that total will be the answer to my multiplication problem. Six boxes represents the groups. How many go in each box or how many in a group is our unknown. So six times blank equals 48, and then you solve it, figure out what that blank equals, whatever goes here also goes there. And do five, six, seven. Reflect says when using factor times factor equals product, does the order of the factors matter? Um, so what they're saying is if I took this, does it matter if I put the six here or the six here? Uh, no, that doesn't matter. But what does matter is understanding that 48 was our total and that that belongs over here in the product, that it's not a factor, that your, your quotient or your total is over here, is our product or our total in our multiplication problem. Six is one of our factors. The unknown is our other factor. It does not matter if the six is here or if the six is there, you'll still end up with the same answer. When you're done with those problems, you will move on to the practice page. Same as what we were just doing, write a multiplication equation with the square as the unknown number to model each word problem. Solve the equation, then write the solution in a complete sentence. The complete sentence is already written for you. You're just putting the number in there. So in this one, we're trying to find out how many pens, blank pens, whatever that blank is there. You'll put the multiplication sentence over here. Again, I would probably do the division one first. I'd probably do division first. So this is 36 divided by four equals what? And then I will turn that into 36 goes here. Four, four sheep and a pen. So that is how many are in a group. We don't know how many groups. There's my multiplication sentence find out what the blank will equal, and then write that number again there. So take your time, do those. Um, that's all the new work. Uh, tomorrow we'll do the review and the assessment, and I'll also have the unit assessment posted too, which is um, everything that we've done through this entire unit. So everything in unit four, all the multiplication division lessons that I've done videos for, um, the questions, uh, are going to be from all of that. Um, so that's going to be posted as well um, as the uh, unit, I think it's called a post-test, unit, unit four post-test. Um, so you'll have three things tomorrow that, that'll be part of lesson five. You'll have the review, the video with the review, then you'll have the week six assessment, and then you'll also have the post-unit uh, test. So that'll be on there as well. Um, but hey, great job. Finish line's right around the corner. Um, I'm, I'm thrilled that you've gone this far. Uh, that's why I do silly stuff like this. Um, but great job, and I'll see you tomorrow. All right, bye-bye.